what is up guys holy housing market so it is so crazy it's hit 5.03 percent or something like that like 30 year fixed and so i just wanted to say a couple things for this because i just think it's crazy and i have a prediction so one of the things that I'm seeing right now is you're seeing outrageous amounts of FOMO, right? Like everyone's heard a story about someone in like Miami or San Francisco is like, oh, well, I paid a million dollars over asking. I'm like, okay, awesome. That's like one story that you've heard. But then on the other side of the house, you have right now, just to give you guys some super basic math on this, because it's really interesting and it didn't really hit me until today, is if you have like a $500,000 house that said 2.75% that we've been at, that's 2000 bucks per month, right? right? And so we are very quickly approaching 6% interest rates. So if we hit 6% interest rates, that same $500,000 house is going to be three grand a month. And like people don't magically go from like, oh yeah, yeah, I can afford 2000 bucks a month to I can afford three. Like nobody, 50% raises are out of control. Like no one's getting that, you know, even in a massive inflationary environment, we're going up like 8%, which is huge. That's huge raises across the board. And so the prediction that I have is that two things. One is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in investing is that when people get FOMO, that's generally when bad things happen. So every single time that I've invested to where I'm like, oh man, I missed the boat, whether it's like Bitcoin or whether it's, you know, this stock or anything like that, every single time that that happens and I get that feeling, that's right before something adverse happens. And the reason why that happens is because we're herd animals, right? So we're herd animals and we always like don't want to miss the boat. And the same time that we get that feeling, other people get that feeling. And then that's really at the point where it crashed. So the same thing is when I bought into Bitcoin, like right at the very end, I didn't put in that much, but it was just like I had that feeling and then the whole market kind of crashed down. And so that's the first thought. The second one is a prediction. So this one is really, really interesting. So I think that inventory is going to drop. I think that people are going to watch a lot of pressure being put in the housing market. So you've got a seller's market where everyone can just command everything, right? If you have bought a house in the past year or two, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like sellers just big dog you. They just like treat you like you're like trash and you're trying to buy a house. And you're just like, Jesus, I'm putting my life savings online and I'm being treated like a peasant. It's absurd and it's changing. So you know, people can big dog you when there's a ton of other offers on the table, like seven offers, right? But I'm starting to see more houses to where there's one offer. And when you have one buyer versus one seller, people get nice real quick, right? So people get all of a sudden, they're just like being super sweet to you, trying to help out. And then I'm like, huh, power dynamics at work. This is a fun one. So my prediction is that you're gonna see downward pressure on houses and you're gonna to start to see multiple people kind of pull back because they're not gonna be able to get through their prequal letters, right? Prequal letters are gonna get pulled, which is super sad, but you know, people, because interest rates are rising so fast, they're not gonna be able to qualify for the same home. So then you're gonna have less competition and then as that happens, you're gonna to start to see kind of housing value maybe like drop a little bit. And then a lot of people are gonna be like, hey, you know, I'll just wait for the market to rebound, et cetera, et cetera but here's the edge that no one's thinking about. If you guys notice, go on Zillow right now, go on Redfin and look at how many homes that are not built yet, that are construction homes are being listed for sale. So this one I think is so fascinating because what's happening is that builders see the writing on the wall. They're getting killed right now in the stock market because of interest rates, because everyone knows that their loans are gonna be resetting with their bridge loans and they're gonna get killed. And so they're trying to pre-sell their houses to you and be like, yo, this house is gonna be done in three months, six months, nine months. Like you'll see a lot of signs are like ready by Christmas. And you're like, huh, that's interesting. So you're seeing all these listings that are gonna come on right now and it's gonna be start competing with people that are selling their normal homes to where like you see a bunch of houses to where you're like, I can't believe people are listing this crab that they're trying to get like a million bucks for. And you're just like, they're gonna start competing with builders with brand new homes that they're listing that they can get what they want. And then builders are gonna start dropping their prices because they know that if the market gets up to 6%, that's gonna be a 50% increase in mortgage rates. There's absolutely no way the houses can maintain at that value. No way. It's not even, there's no physical world that we go to 6% and housing doesn't drop. That's not possible. So not saying it's going to go to 6%, but if it does, housing will drop like 10, 20%. And so, you know, it's, it's fascinating. So I think one of the key things to watch for right now 
is watching the amount of listings, the amount of inventory that's popping up on the market, specifically the amount of new contracts or the new houses that are being built that are listed ahead of time, because that is an addictive data point. So then another thing to really think through is just, you know, the best advice that I can give right now is don't let people big dog you right now. Like, I don't care what sellers say. I don't care all of that stuff because I was working with like my mortgage broker and I was working with my real estate agent. And like three weeks ago, I was talking to everybody and they're just like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Markets are super hot, all these things. And I'm like, hey, the bond market is changing, guys. Like it's really changing. It's going to affect the market. And, you know, I was getting poo-pooed, poo-pooed. And then last time I talked last week, real different sentiment. They are not getting phone calls at the mortgage brokers. No one is refinancing their house. People are not buying homes. You're starting to see people increase like dropping out. So not saying that that's going to happen everywhere. I think there's a ton of liquidity in New York City, Miami, Austin, and San Francisco because you had a ton of IPOs. So you got a bunch of people that are millionaires just sitting on the side. But in normal parts of the world where people have to make cash flow to get their payment, you're going to see changes happen in the market. And I don't think it's going to be some doomsday kind of thing, but I think it's going to have some effect and it's something to look out for. So, you know, like I keep on saying over and over again, you know, I don't care about being right. I care about finding truth. So just hit me with the facts that are kind of go counter to that. I just want to learn more. Obviously, there's still a ton of buyer demand. So we're going to be competing with that. But, you know, I do think I do think things are changing. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.